What's up guys? Welcome back to another After the Previews Reacts. It's a little bit delayed because that's how life works and shit gets in the way. But if you are just now for the first time tuning in to After the Previews channel on YouTube or finding us on iTunes or however the fuck you're seeing us or hearing us with your eyes or ears or mouth, I don't know how that works, but if you can, good job. Um, we do reviews, we do podcasts weekly, we do a bunch of shit, but today we are reacting, which means I'm driving home from just seeing The Mummy starring Tom Cruise and uh, Sophia Batella, and we had uh, a plethora of other people up in there as well. And uh, yeah, it was, a uh, fuck, who we have? Jake Johnson, he was in there for, for a moment. Uh, so this is the start to an long-going, overarching universe where Universal's monsters are coming together to fight crime, just like the Avengers did, because that is the new trend in Hollywood is to have a connected, interconnected universe where all the movies come together to fuck and make other fucking movies. Ha, no. Um, but yeah, The Mummy is the start to this, so if you are universal and you're like, I'm gonna start a universe, who in Hollywood can you get if The Rock is taking Tom Cruise? That's who. And uh, yeah, this movie is not good. This movie is not what you would expect necessarily from The Mummy, just at its title. Um, at its roots, though, it is most definitely a horror franchise, horror movie, horror uh, adaptation, horror source material. There's a lot of the spooks in the previous mummies. If you don't count the Brendan Fraser ones, at its roots, it is very much a horror movie that has since the millennium kind of switched into this weird action-adventure coming of age, if you will, even though the protagonists are all old, they're still finding something within themselves. Uh, yeah, coming of age, coming of the 50 age mark is uh, what it should be. But yeah, man, this movie at its best is a 5 out of 10. At its worst, it is a 2 out of 10. And uh, the that's not that big of a difference if you're just looking at it on a number basis, but it's kind of a big deal if you're going from a mediocre movie that I can tolerate to just the most unorganized fucking clusterfuck of one, uh, trying to get the plot across to people, two, trying to rationalize there being a mummy in modern day, and three, just trying to connect the world that is going to be in the future with these other movies. They've already greenlit The Bride of Frankenstein, said that's coming out in 2019. We have Javier Bardem as the Frankenstein, uh, Johnny Depp as the Invisible Man, Kurt Russell as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Who was the standout in this movie? He had about a 10 minute scene, and that's me saying 10 minutes because how good that scene felt in comparison to how long this movie is in comparison to how short it is, it was so good that it just felt like it probably ran longer than it probably did. Uh, I just wanted to soak it all in and never let that end, because then once that scene ended with a uh, Dr. Uh, Jekyll and, you know, maybe his, his homie, no spoilers in this, uh, once that scene ends, you get back to the whole Tom Cruise plot, and it's like, man, I just can't get on board with this. And... You know, they're trying to build this idea that, like, the prodigium or whatever it is, is the the place where all monsters are safe. You can come here and you can enjoy the time that you will stay. It's like the, uh, the hotel in John Wick, but for monsters, except you get experimented on and, uh, you know, you might die if you're a monster because they may just take your powers. Um, but Dr. Jekyll kind of runs this thing, and that whole moment was cool because it did lend to, they do have an idea, they do have a basis for what is going on in this monster universe, the dark universe. Um, but man, did, even though you had so much style and so much attempted substance, none of it had weight. None of it had actual feasible, uh, like monetary weight everything just felt like it was bloated just to fill the time frame that it would take to have a feature length movie and I don't really like that in a uh, to put it in layman's terms like if you're gonna make a mummy movie and you're gonna say that this is the one that's gonna start this is the Iron Man of your universe this is the Man of Steel that's not a good uh, example but this is the Iron Man of your universe I love Man of Steel by the way uh, I just it's hard for me to get behind that on face value. But then when you take into account the, the, just the, the money that they're putting behind this thing, the idea of this connecting into other movies and just the, the highlight of the few but other monsters that they were shown, showing in this movie, 
it's kind of worth it if you can get behind that but it's also one of those things where it's like I'm just excited to see Frankenstein punch Dracula in the fucking face. And that's not going to be for 50 years. So, you know, our movies are two to three years to make. And they're not going to rapidly just put six into production. Because they want to test the waters. And they probably want to do it right. Which I tip the hat to knowing that there's not a fucking Wolfman movie coming out next year. Just based off of what they think at Universal. As producers of this movie. As executives of the studio. They projected, uh, I'm glad that they didn't jump the gun in projecting that this movie would do better than it was. I, I'm glad that they did take the wait and see approach. Yeah, they did put out the promotional material for the Dark Universe. There's a splash image in front of the fucking movie with the Dark Universe. Uh, the score is done by the guy who just fucking replaced uh, Junkie. But yeah, he's, he just did, Bat he did Batman 89. Fuck, dude. That'll come to me one day and I'll be very pissed when I remember. But that guy, he did the score. The score to the tone of what that Dark Universe flash image or opening sequence or whatever you want to call it. Just like the Marvel comic book pages flapping all around. Uh, that was cool. So they do have an idea. They do have a basis. They do have a foundation. Just with this one movie under its belt, I did not feel like they built much on top of the foundation. And what goes on with Jake Johnson's character and what goes on with uh, Tom Cruise's character. I am not a fan of. I am not okay with this. I don't think that the end of this movie puts them in a position to where I'm like, oh, ho, ho, the Mummy 2! Green light that! Mummy 2, 3, 4, 5! Yeah! No, none of that happened. And, uh, you know, I maybe need to lower my expectations. I did not watch the trailers. I watched the initial trailer. I knew about the plane crash, but as far as, like, the scenes in in town and in modern day in like a big city of London I believe it is uh, or maybe New York no it was London it was definitely European uh, not not too into it not too even if I had saw that in the trailers I don't think that would have uh, attracted me more to this film or detract me from seeing the movie knowing what's going on I think I kind of would have known like oh shit this is going on in this direction okay temper your expectations Garrett but because I really was hoping that one the power of Tom Cruise and two the idea that they've been working on this for a fucking long time as far as what movie is going to set up this universe you would think they would have chosen wisely like this is gonna be our one for sure home run and we're gonna start the franchise off with this they did not do that so can I recommend this movie to you on a non-spoiler basis? Um, yeah, if you can catch a $5 showing or an early morning showing, or if you just love Tom Cruise and want to see Tom Cruise do action-y things, then there's a couple of those scenes in there for you. But if you're looking for a quality film that is going to really get your boner juiced for this monster universe, then you're going to have to look someplace else, unfortunately. But uh, the attempt, great. The idea, not so much. But, um, I mean... The idea, great. The attempt, not so much. I just hope that they can push forward um, and kind of hash out the the nomenclatures of this universe. And just, I think once we get settled in and accustomed to what is going on in the monsters universe, the dark universe, um, then I think we'll be more okay. But like after Godzilla knowing that King Kong was coming on, I felt like King Kong did a better job adapting from the tone that was implemented into. Uh, Godzilla. So I can look at the mummy as Godzilla and say, hey, if you're going to make a Wolfman movie in this tone, don't do that. Don't fucking do that. Please pull a uh, Man of Steel versus Wonder Woman. The tones are different. Even though you start a connected series with a certain tone doesn't mean you have to stick to it if it's not working particularly across the board with all the characters. And I do not want to see this tone be taken with Frankenstein because it doesn't work as an action movie in my opinion. We've already seen I, Frankenstein. And I swear to God, if Harry Potter shows up as Igor, we are done. That is that the cord is being cut. The cord. Here's the cord. Um, but yeah, uh... Five out of ten for me. I would. I feel like I'm still kind of being gracious because as time goes on, the movie sinks into my head and it's just so pointless. There's not a lot of drive to these characters and they don't believe what the fuck they're doing and I don't believe what they're doing because they don't believe in themselves and that is just... That's just filmmaking, guys. You, you can have a great script, great characters, but it, sometimes the acting doesn't come across. Sometimes the editing mumbles the performance. There's a lot of inner working notes going on and without Kurtzman taking on his directorial debut with a big blockbuster like this one I can't say I'm surprised that 
uh, it didn't pan out how they wanted to. Maybe if I could give them some advice, Universal, uh, I'm not someone that you should probably take advice from, but you know, maybe give this to someone like a Fetty Alvarez or a young buck who just came off of a really good movie who can maybe spearhead this in an original, uh, fresh way. And I know we're talking about like old ass characters with the mummy. It doesn't get much older than that bitch, but like, I don't know. I think there's something to giving this film to Alex Kurtzman and allowing him to set the tone because it's not right. He may be the guy behind the scenes as a producer or a writer kind of looking over someone who's a more visionary director. That, I think, could work. So don't get rid of Alex Kurtzman because he clearly has an idea that is there and that people believe in when he's talking about it. Just how you execute the idea doesn't always come across. So, um, yeah. That's my uh, reaction to The Mummy, starring Tom Cruise, 2017. If this is your first time listening to After the Previews, go follow us on Twitter, at After the Preview, A-F-T-E-R-T-H-E-P-R-E-V-I-E-W, After the Preview. And you can follow me on Twitter, at Yogurt, Y-O-G-R-T-T, and you can follow my co-host, Kyle. He's the guy who's really reviewing the movies a lot. I just took this one right from under him. He didn't, he didn't even have a chance to see The Mummy, because I'm so quick. Yeah, but you can follow him on Twitter at ATP Kyle K Y L E. Um, we appreciate you. We love you. Look out for our reviews. Look out for episode 27 of the podcast coming this motherfucking week. Peace.